before we go any further firstly i want to share the revelation that the lord god had given to my sister zipporah some years ago i'm just going to paraphrase it because it has some very very important lessons in it so while my sister was sleeping the lord god sent an angel who came to her to deliver a message and she said that as she laid down in bed this happened some years ago as she laid down in bed she saw an angel entering her room and as soon as the angel entered her room she could see herself still lying down there but her spirit came out and stood next to the angel so she said that the angel introduced himself as angel gabriel and he began to show her certain things she saw names written on the window on her that this was in her room so the angel moved to the window and began to show her names of people and she could see as though the names of the people were written on the window pane and the angel said to her that these are the children of god that these are real children of god according to the father's will but the angel of the lord began to show her the lives of this of these christians she saw that very quickly one of them backslid so she was very shocked that this person had so quickly fallen into uh, fornication and then she saw another lady a girl who also fell into fornication so she was really shocked and asked the angel how could these christians who are god's children how could they just all of a sudden backslide how could they backslide so quickly then the angel began to show her that beneath each name on the window pane she began to see other names and the angel said to her that these are the names of their boyfriends and their girlfriends the angel said to her that it was because these people had boyfriends and girlfriends this was why they had so quickly fallen from the lord and they had backslidden back into their sins and the angel told her that such relationships do not please the lord he began to tell her that many people engage in these relationships with the opposite sex without even the view of marriage anywhere nearby. They just want to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And the angel told her that all these are just Satan's traps to trap people into sexual immorality because he knows that when you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, it's very easy for you to fall into lust and into sexual sin. So today I want to talk about this topic of dating i feel this is a very important topic that needs to be discussed you know because it's going to help a lot of people to avoid falling into sexual sin before getting married so in our time and era it is very common i think in most parts of the world for people to begin to date as soon as they get in high school like they want to have a boyfriend or to have a girlfriend a lot of young people are pressured like they just have to be in a relationship or if they are not then something is wrong with them i've come across many people who say maybe something is wrong with me because i've never had a boyfriend or i've never even had a girlfriend you know as though it's a passage of life you know whereby you just have to have a boyfriend or you just have to have a girlfriend before you get married. And that is because we live in a world that is ruled by the prince of darkness, Satan, who's the prince of this world. But as God's children, we don't have to be governed by his rules and you know by his, all these standards that he has set to say everyone needs to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend at some point you know, before they get married. No, we don't have to. It's not God's will for us to be engaged in all these relationships before we get married. God's will is that we should save ourselves completely for marriage, 
not even engaging in kissing or any sexual acts before we get married. It isn't God's will and it is a sin. I had shared a video before on the topic of dating and God's will about it, where I shared that God's will on marriage and dating is that we have to wait on the Lord. We need to trust the Lord, knowing that he is a good father who is willing to give good gifts to those who ask. We need to learn to wait on God. You know, many people, there are many people who end up engaging in inappropriate relationships just because they feel that if they do not do this, they may never get married. You know, like they may never find their husband or their wife unless they engage in all these sinful acts. But that is a lie from Satan because the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. And the gift that comes from the Lord, it does not come with sinful conditions. The gift that comes with sinful conditions is from Satan. That is obvious. Don't feel pressured, you know, just because maybe you're in high school don't feel pressured and say you need to start dating. You know, some people say, oh, you need to practice what a relationship is like, or you need to practice so that you're going to be, you know, a better spouse in marriage. But there's no practice with marriage. God is the one who instituted marriage. Where did Adam practice being a good partner before he married Eve? But God just brought Eve to Adam and said, this is your wife. And she became his wife. So, if we wait on the Lord and then the Lord gives you uh, your godly spouse, you know, if the Lord gives you the person whom he has appointed to be your partner, then you don't even need any practice before that. But if we just take it upon ourselves without involving the Lord, we're going to find ourselves in a lot of uh, and godly relationships and even falling into sexual immorality because that is the whole purpose of having boyfriends and girlfriends. That is the whole purpose why Satan has set it up. Because for example, if you're in high school, why do you need to date? Why do you need a boyfriend or a girlfriend? You don't need one. You do not need one because firstly, you're not even in, the, in a position to get married. And marriage is not anywhere nearby. So the only thing that that relationship is going to result in, even if you tell yourself that uh, you have both agreed that you're not going to engage in sexual sin, but you eventually are because you have already opened the door. You know, that is why the message that the Lord had given to my sister, he was saying these relationships, they are Satan's entryway to make people fall into sexual immorality. As soon as you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, your chances of falling into sexual sin are extremely high compared to someone who doesn't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, someone who's just completely single. And when you reach the time when you're ready for marriage, you need to wait on the Lord. Like, don't, don't be so quick to jump into any relationship with someone you know, because once you jump into a relationship with someone, you know, and you get all your emotions entangled with that person, then you go to the Lord and you begin to pray and ask the Lord that, Lord, is this, is this the person whom you want me to marry? You know, by that time, your emotions are already entangled and eventually you're just going to do the desire of your heart. You know, you're not really going to be in a position to hear and obey God's will for your life. So it's better that even when, when someone, you know, like a prospective spouse shows up, someone whom you feel like maybe you could get married to this person, it's better that even before you get emotionally involved with that person, you take it up to the Lord to pray and ask the Lord if this is the person that he wants you to get married to. There are many people right now who are regretting getting married without waiting on the Lord, without waiting for God's will. You know, 
And one thing I, I need to make clear is just because the Lord spoke to you or gave you a confirmation that the person that you're getting married to is the one that he wants you to marry, it doesn't mean that your marriage is just going to be perfect and flawless. It doesn't mean that uh, your marriage is not going to face challenges. It's still bound to face challenges like every other marriage, but at least you would be with the right person, you know, who is God's will for you. Because even as God has his will for you, Satan also has his will for you. And many times when you're waiting on the Lord uh, to bring your spouse many times satan likes to bring his own person first so if you do not involve god if you just want to make your own decisions without praying about it and being sure that this is god's will for you you know we are the children of god even when you have an earthly father obviously you're not going to get married without involving your earthly father as long as you are in very good uh, terms with your father, maybe only in exceptions where people are in very bad terms with their father, that's when they would get married without the involvement of their parents. But when you have a normal relationship with your parents, obviously your parents are going to be involved uh, even when you're getting married. You know, you're, they are going to know about it and obviously you're going to talk about it. You know, and we are children of God. So how how are you going to go and get married to someone without the consent of your heavenly father? Like without talking to your father about it, like asking for his opinion and his will for you. So God is a real father to us. And when you take it up to the Lord, the Lord is going to make it clear to you whether this is his will for you or not and doing this is extremely important because it's going to save you a lot of things that you could have gone through had you not involved the lord you know some people say i don't need to involve the lord because i'm in love with this person like i love this person and this person loves me but i know so many people who are in that situation where they refuse to listen to the lord and ended up getting married to the person who is uh, of their own heart's desire but not of the Lord's and just a few years later they begin to regret it because you know because all those feelings that you're going to have obviously at the beginning you know like they're not going to be enough to sustain your marriage it has to be built on Jesus Christ who is the owner of marriage so it is really important for us to involve Jesus Christ firstly because he's the one who instituted marriage secondly because he is our father and he is able to give us good gifts and he's also able to save us from stepping in the wrong path when the enemy has brought a wrong person and when you're a child of God the enemy is going to be extremely determined to make sure that you marry the wrong person, to make sure that he sends someone away whom he knows that is going to destroy you. Because your spouse, you know, like your husband or your wife, is obviously going to be the closest person in your life once you get married. If the enemy can get someone who is either an unbeliever because he can easily manipulate the, that person, you know, because they do not have the spiritual covering. Or if he can have even like a Satanist or a Nephilim, you know, to get married to you, a child of God, then it's more, I would say like half of his work is done because you're going to have that person constantly in your life, like extremely close. And now, that person is going to start to begin to start to frustrate your walk with the Lord. Either deliberately, if they are a Nephilim or a Satanist, you know, like in witchcraft, or the enemy could just be, or the enemy could just begin to manipulate them because they are unbelievers, you know.
and the enemy can easily access them and use them as a weapon against you. You know, it's something that we often take very lightly, but it's something that is extremely important. When I was in high school, someone befriended my elder brother and they became really, really close friends. And this person, you know, uh, seemed like a good Christian. Even my parents really used to speak very highly of him saying, oh, he's so God-fearing, you know, he's, he's a child of God. And, you know, he became really, really close to my family and even began to stay over sometimes. Like he would stay over with my family for like maybe a day or two days. And he was extremely close to my brother. And by the time I got into college, not only did this person remain very close to my brother, but he started wanting to get close to me. And by then, you know, I didn't think much about it because all I thought was, it's just because he's my brother's friend, you know? But little did I know that he had a plan, you know, that the devil had sent him to. And by this time, I was still a local Christian. Like, I hadn't encountered the Lord yet. I was just going to church and living a normal life like everybody else. But the enemy could already see God's call on my life because the enemy can see God's call on your life the very moment that you're born, even when you're still living in the world, even before you begin to walk in the call that God has for you, the enemy can already see it because he's seen you in the spirit. So the enemy could already see God's call on my life and he had already sent someone whom he wanted to use to come and destroy, you know, and just quench that call of God on my life. You know, one thing, one thing that I really liked about the revelation that my sister had, the one I shared earlier, you know, there was this part where the angel told her that when he was talking about the boyfriends and girlfriends, and he said, many people like to say, this guy is crazy about me, but they're not crazy about you. They're crazy about destroying God's call on your life and taking you to hell. There are people who are like that, brothers and sisters. There are people who are like that, whom Satan has sent. And they are not crazy about you. You know, they are not in love with you. But all that they want is to destroy God's call on your life. And their work is done. That's all that they want. That's all they're interested in. And they'll go to great lengths just to come and have access to you. And so this person started to get close to me and I was thinking it's just because he's my brother's friend, you know, and now he was like a family friend because he was even like spending a lot of time in my family sometimes. And as soon as I was done with college, he made his intentions known to me that he wanted to marry me. And the Lord really had his protection on me even though I was still lukewarm, you know, even though I was still in the world, the Lord had his protection on me because I had like zero interest in this person. And looking back now, I see that it was God's hand on my life, like protecting me from making a wrong decision. And I made it very clear to him that his feelings were not mutual. Like I did not love him and I didn't want to get married to him, you know, and even after that, he kept on like insisting, he kept on like persisting all the way until um, he only stopped when I got married to my husband. Like he was that determined. Because I got married to my husband in 2016. And this man started like um, pursuing me, like wanting to get married to me from like 2011, I think like end of 2011 just before I started to get close to the Lord. So from 20, from like end of 2011, all the way until 2016, this man like pestered me, saying that he wanted, he wanted me to marry him. And the Lord has his, had his hand strongly on me, protecting me until one day, somewhere in 20, I think like 20, end of 2015, 
somewhere like end of 2015. That's when, that's when the Lord revealed him to me. You know, all this time, all I knew is I wasn't interested in this person. But end of 2015, the Lord now gave me a revelation. I was sleeping. And as I was sleeping, I had a dream where I could see that I was sleeping. And when I saw myself lying down in bed sleeping, suddenly I saw a demonic spirit flying at top speed. And when I looked, I recognized that it was this person who had always been bothering me about me marrying him. And this evil spirit just flew at top speed, flew at top speed towards the place where I was lying down. And I knew that it wanted to possess me, like it, it had planned to jump into my body, like to possess me. So it flew at very high speed and came like determined to come and jump into my body, like to get me possessed. But the Lord protected me. It fell right by the side. And when I lay down to sleep again, again, I saw it and it happened three times. And I recognized it. The Lord showed him to me now that he was a Nephilim and that Satan had actually just sent him. And the Lord had just protected me from what the enemy had done. Satan had sent this person in order to marry me, in order to destroy God's call on my life. I don't know what he had planned to start doing once we get married. But the Lord made it clear to me that he was sent by Satan in order to destroy God's call on my life, to prevent me from fulfilling, what the, from fulfilling the work that God wanted me to do. And that is why we need to be very, very careful when we're getting married. That is why we need to involve the Lord so that we do not marry Satan's will for us, but God's will for us. And even the time, like just before, I got married to my husband, you know, and even before I got married to my husband, you know, I had been spending a lot of time in prayer with the Lord and I had been asking the Lord to help me to recognize my husband when I meet him, like to help me to recognize the person whom he wants me to get married to because I did not want to get married to a person who is sent by Satan or to a wrong person. As I began to pray asking for God's will, the Lord gave me a vision one day, you know, where I saw something, it was like a machine, you know, it had like a radar, more like if somebody gets in there, like if you stand there, you know, then the Lord told me that when the wrong person stands there, it's got the wrong person, like, the person whom Jesus Christ doesn't want me to get married to, when they stand there, he told me that the light was going to, to turn red. And only if it turns green, that's when it's the right person, you know? And as I watched in that vision, I, I saw the first person, you know, walking towards the machine and it was the same person you know whom the lord later revealed to me as a nephilim uh, the one who was my brother's friend so he walked towards the machine when he just stood there the lights became red you know like it just kept it just kept flashing like that and then i knew that this was definitely not god's will for me and he walked out and another person walked towards the machine you know, somebody whom I knew and the lights became red and there were like three people whom Jesus Christ made to pass through the machine, like to warn me to say, don't even try getting married to any of these three people, you know, and all of the three people, like the lights just turned on red, you know, it just kept on flashing red like that. I got concerned that I might end up getting married to the wrong person. So I told the Lord that when I get to meet my husband, I want him to wear red because 
that is how I want to know that he's the one whom you have chosen for me because I don't want to get married to someone who's not your will for me. You know, it wasn't like I, it was something that was even on my mind. You know, I had just surrendered it to the Lord. Like, I don't want to start dating. I don't want to be, you know, in any relationship with someone because I didn't want to have the risk of falling into sexual sin. And by now I was a Christian, of course, like I was born again. I was filled with the spirit of God. And I had just given it to the Lord, like, Lord, I just want you to bring the person whom you want, not whom I want. And Lord, if the person whom I'm going to get married to is going to negatively impact my relationship with you, then I don't even want to get married. Like, I remember during this period, it was a period when I was so deeply in love with the Lord. Like, my time was literally, like, all spent for the Lord. Like I would go to work. When I get back home, like all I would do is either like I would do evangelism or I would be praying. Like my time was literally spent on Jesus and I had no time for anything else. But there are so many uh, ungodly theories of people going out there, like getting desperate, getting to advertise themselves and all that. It's not God's will. It isn't. I had shared that message where Jesus had shown me a vision of this lady who was so desperate like to get married and she was busy googling like how to attract a man you know how to make a man love you how to make a man addicted to you and you know I'm going to link the video in the in the description box but the Lord was showing that that wasn't his will for his daughters it's not his will for you to go and start Googling, like in order to attract a man or, or whatever, you know, God's will is just for you to just live your life as you're waiting on the Lord, not to get to a place where you are desperate and you start to advertise yourself. Oh, no, it's not God's will, not his will for his daughters. So when I met my husband, he was also so much, you know, into preaching about heaven and hell. Like it's something that was always on his heart. He later came to tell me that he always used to think that maybe there's something wrong with him because all the preachers, you know, that he was associating with, like all that they wanted to talk about was money. They just wanted to talk about prosperity. But for him, it's more like whenever he began to preach, like no matter how he would start his sermon he would always find himself talking about like by the end of the day he would always find himself talking about you know about repentance and about heaven and hell about eternity so he would always wonder like is there something wrong with me you know why am i always somehow he would always find himself like back at that very thing because that is upon god's heart you know, and when I met him, you know, I had gone to share my testimony somewhere. And that is how I met my husband. I had gone to share my testimony at a, a church. And by this time, my husband was already like preaching about the end times a whole lot. And we became friends. We started to spend a lot of time with my husband and my sister Zipporah, like going to the prayer mountain would go to a prayer mountain, you know, start to pray, uh, doing prayer and fasting, you know, seeking the Lord. And so my husband and I never really had that time where I can say like we were dating. We had the similar interests because our callings are very similar. We ended up having so many things in common, so many things to talk about. So I had no idea that my husband was the person I was going to marry during this time. So we started to do a lot of ministry work together, like with my husband, my sister, and some other people. And later on, when we were looking at some pictures that we had taken from the first day, like now, later on, like when we were married, that's when I remembered, like, he actually wore a red shirt. Just like I had asked Jesus that I want him to wear a red shirt 
when I meet him. But still, like before I even had to allow my emotions to be engaged, like I had to seek the face of the Lord. And my husband knew that that was important because even then, you know, and he told me of his intentions that he wanted me to marry him. You know, I remember he told me that, you know, uh, that he wasn't asking me if I could be his girlfriend, but his intention, like what he wanted was he wanted to ask me if I could marry him. And of course, that was a good thing to me because I don't really believe in the boyfriend girlfriend relationships because it's just an open door for satan he equally knew of the importance of asking the lord for his permission because like i said he's our father so he told me that this was his intention he was asking me that he was asking me if i could marry him but he wanted to have god's permission first he said that he knew that we had to have god's permission first like he knew that we couldn't he couldn't just come and get his daughter without his permission so we had to ask the lord about it and only when the lord said yes you know and at this time and at this time like my heart was really for the lord like i hadn't allowed my emotions to be entangled and i hadn't allowed my emotions to be entangled like at this point I was really, you know, I was really ready for whatever the Lord wanted. I was really ready to do whatever the Lord wanted. You know, I wasn't in that state whereby I just want to, I just want uh, Conrad to be my husband. No, but I wanted God's will for my life, you know, and I wanted to make sure that he understood the things that I believe in, you know, especially the things about holiness and all that, because I didn't want him to become a stumbling block in my walk with God. And it turned out that the Lord had already begun to teach him uh, similar things even before that. And even when the Lord gave us the go ahead, I remember the Lord said that we had to make him the center of our relationship, the center of our marriage. And so I'm just giving you an example like of how we can seek the Lord, you know, and like I said, just because someone is God's will for your life, it doesn't mean you're not going to face challenges. You are going to face challenges. Like we've also had to face so many challenges that we've had to overcome by the help of the Lord and to make a deliberate decision you know and i feel like i'm not and i feel like i'm not really in a position maybe to give marriage advice because i haven't been married for too long like we're going to be married for eight years this coming april so i feel like maybe people who've been married like maybe 20 years maybe would be in a bigger position to give all that advice like or how to make a marriage last and all those things. But what I wanted to talk about was the process of you getting married. Like, how can you stay in God's will? How can you involve the Lord? How can you ask the Lord to guide you? How can you, av how can you avoid getting married to the person Satan has prepared for you? So I hope that you were blessed by this video and that if you're waiting on the Lord, that you have been encouraged, that God is going to give you good things. You know, when I waited on the Lord for my husband, and even when we got married, you know, even up to now, you know, my husband is very, very supportive of anything that I do for the Lord. He is extremely supportive. Most of the videos, he's the one who films my videos, you know, and he's the one who created the YouTube channel. You know, he, he's he been so supportive of the work that the Lord has given me to do. And I remember that the time that I was getting married to my husband, I remember that he had told me that he was extremely hesitant. You know, he was extremely hesitant um, to get married to me because he felt like it was a huge responsibility 
in the sense that he knew God's call on my life and he said that he had this fear that what if I become a stumbling block to her fulfilling God's call? Like what if he becomes a stumbling block and prevents me from fulfilling God's call on my life? And of course, eventually it was something that he had to think about like a lot deeply, like he had to think about if it was something that he really, really wanted because he already knew the work that God had prepared me for. And eventually, of course, he decided that he was up to it and he's been extremely supportive of anything that I, I would do for the Lord. Like my husband would literally move mountains just to help me serve the Lord better. Like he would literally do anything to support me in doing whatever the Lord wants me to do. And I know that if I married that Nephilim man, obviously it would be the opposite, you know, and that is why it's so important, like for us to wait on the Lord and not to jump up to our own will. So I hope that if you're waiting on the Lord for a spouse, I hope that you stay pure. I hope that you do not conform to the world you know but you keep yourself pure and know that waiting on the lord is not in vain and god is going to give you the desire of your heart that you don't have to compromise for a gift that comes from the lord you do not have to compromise you do not have to fall into sin just in order for you to get your godly spouse so may the lord bless you and may he guide you on your journey